Welcome back, Soul Tribe, to David Berry 75's channel. I am your guest reader, Tony, and um, if you'd like to guest read, go ahead and give David a um, an email or send him a message in Discord. And we're going to continue on with Chapter 10, The Seven Keys of Wisdom, and we left off with the principle of rhythm. All right. The principle of ry rhythm states... Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swings, swing manifest in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. The, this principle teaches us that everything is subject to rhythmic oscillation, which is manifested between two poles. There is an action and reaction, an ebb and flow, an advance and retreat, a, a rise and fall, and this is applicable to absolutely everything. The universe, the planets, nature, man, nations and civilizations are all born to reach the heights and then to decline and be destroyed thus fulfilling the cycle of life the ebb and flow is manifested in our physical body <clears throat> in our emotions feelings instincts intelligence and even in the different vital situations in which we live it refers to our personal projects, our relationships with other people, our contact with nature, and in general, everything that forms a part of life. The symbol of the principle of rhythm is the pendulum. It, its oscillation explains the action of rhythm, whose measurement towards the left is the same as towards the right. On a practical note, we could even call this law the law of pendulum. Creation occurs according to the pendulum. There's an emanation of the all and an absorption flows. Emanation is the time of creation and absorption is the stage in which the all re- um, reintegrates its energy in itself. <clears throat> we can compare this to the cycle of human respiration. The supreme being radiates his energy until it materializes into a physical creation. And when this reaches the summit, it max its maximum degree of materialization. It then starts the op opposite oscillation of the pendulum until it again reaches dematerialization of death and the divine creative energy is reintegrated into its original source. In the same way, nations reach the summit of the power and then gradually decline. Nothing escapes this law. It is an absolutely inevitable process. It, it's not easy, however, to determine when a human being, a civilization, or a strength has reached its zenith. What we do know with certainty is that decay inevitably takes place. The principle of rhythm together with that of polarity previously mentioned are the f forces which maintain the process of life as life is always a force which moves alternatively and rhythmically between two poles. If we had to define life and death, we would say that life is the oscillation between two poles and death, the polarization of the force at one extreme for a time which surpasses the equilibrium of nature. This polarization can be negative or positive, it is negative when both sides are too close together. <clears throat> Each one of them loses a great part of its intrinsic qualities. It is positive when it is possible to consciously destroy an undesirable vibration and the polarity is changed. <clears throat> Polarization is the extreme opposite direction. 
in this case of negative polarization due to a weakening of the opposite poles, a decay of vital forces is produced, which may end in the fusion of the poles. This is equivalent to death. The secret of life is thus revealed in a simple manner. It is the constant maintenance of the tension between two poles. Truthfully, we could say that when a child is born, the opposite pole of his life are very far apart and therefore the tension between them is great. But as the child grows older, the opposites begin to join and life declines. <clears throat> In this case, the two poles are the conscious and the subconscious, or may also speak of the individual himself and his environment, the constant impact between man and the environment, the, the, the stimulus, slowly depolarizes de him, draining his, light, his vital force. By examining man's vital functions, we can verify that polarity and rhythm control the organi organism in, in its most delicate processes and <clears throat> that illness is always a disturbance of the rhythm of equilibrium and the loss of this implies an abnormal condition. Science calls this equilibrium homostasis. Homostasis has not been sufficiently studied and it's certainly that if scientists would use the principle of rhythm and polarity, they would discover many new things. <clears throat> the function of the heat, breathe, sorry, the function of the heart, breathing, sleeping, and alertness are all governed by the law of the pendulum. Sleep, for example, provides us with the necessary, necessary alteration in order to maintain our equilibrium. We know that the lack of sleep provokes serious disorders and is, destroys organic equilibrium. For a long time, the knowledge of biorhythms remains in the heart of the esoteric schools. This consists of the vital cycles which affect the human being with a positive or negative alteration. Today, this knowledge has become popular and there are even pocket calculators for determining this action. Nevertheless, only three rhythms have been revealed. The 24-day masculine rhythm with 12 positive days and 12 negative days. The 28-day feminine rhythm which with 14 positive days and 14 negative days. The 33-day intellectual rhythm with 16 and a half positive days and 16 and a half negative days. The rhythm of 40, to 40 days, 56 days, 92 days, and 276 day cycles have not yet been revealed to the masses. <clears throat> the object of this book is not to supply instructions on biorhythms, which would require a separate volume. And therefore, we will only give an extreme important tip for those who follow the indications of biorhythms in their daily life. These p people should keep a diary in which they note all happy or unfortunate occurrences in order to determine which of the rhythms has a greater influence in their lives, as this is something that is entirely personal. Some individuals will be very affected by the negative in the 24-day rhythm, while others will feel the negative cycle of the 33-day rhythm. Um, one of the most important aspects of the principle of rhythm is the fact that each person creates his own rhythmic state according to the nature of his acts, which takes on a rhythm of their own when repeated several times. By virtue of these events being repeated periodically in an individual's life, these events or acts occur without his will. That is, that is, events do not happen because the individual wants them to, but on the contrary, he will be incapable of neutralizing negative events. 
we will briefly illustrate how a negative rhythm is born. The person becomes the victim of a theft, for example. And as it is not a very large theft, he does not bother to file a follow-up complaint with the authorities. As a consequence of this, a negative rhythm is formed, and this individual periodically suffers losses of an economic nature, which doubtlessly will occur during planetary positions similar to those that exist on the day of the first theft took place. <clears throat> Another easily verified example concerns uh, martial fights, which end by creating a rhythm of disharmony that will provoke the arising of new uh, and more serious problems. It is thus that rhythm of wealth or poverty are created. Happiness or misfortune, harmony or disharmony, and once they are in motion, it's very difficult to neutralize them. <clears throat> it's very well known that, that misfortunes come in waves as the flowing of the tide. That is, they occur rapidly without the individual having time to react. On the other hand, there are also streaks of good, great or good luck during which a person experiences a series of positive occurrences. From this, it is deduced that the individual takes on a rhythm at a certain moment for reasons not always easy to establish. And as long as that rhythm does not change, the positive or negative tone will be maintained. Unfortunately, there are individuals who take a rhythm of different calamities from early age, which are then repeated at each oscillation of the pendulum. There is generally, generally very difficult this is generally very difficult to neutralize, as the longer it lasts, its power of fluctuation strengthens. Thus, marriages that live with the result of negative rhythms would do well to abstain from having children until the pendulum moves to the other extreme, as a child would be born with an unfortunate rhythmic vibration. Fulfilling the biblical aphorism that the, chi the children will pay for the sins of their parents. <clears throat> Habits are formed by a rhythm, and when they are precious, they can only be destroyed by the creation of a new rhythmic state of an opposite nature. The law of the pendulum completes the knowledge of mental transmutation as it teaches us that it is possible to rise above rhythmic oscillation by becoming polarized in the pole where one desires to remain, thus avoiding being carried by the ebb and flow. Sapiens is a slave to the oscillatory uh, movement of the pendulum, and if he is successful in anything, it is because his actions happen to coincide with the movement of the pendulum. Purely by chance, people are absolutely su subjected to the law of the pendulum, whether it, it be regarding their finances, health, work, vitality, or love, and are like leaves in a storm blown here and there without having any idea of where the tide of life is taking them. On the other hand, the hermeticist can surmount this principle of rhythm even though he cannot annul it with his will power he can rise to the superior plane of cause and let the rhythmic oscillation flow beneath him what is called the law of compensation has much in common with the principle of rhythm compensation means equilibrium or balancing which occurs when the <clears throat> measure of the swing to the left determines the measure of the swing to the right this determines the amount of things a person can possess as the individual has in quantity the exact proportion of what he is lacking it is thus that a man who is rich lacks other advantages um, given to the poor we we all know that saying luck in cards unlucky in love or vice versa this aphorism indicates something about the idea we are discussing as we have already covered this point it is therefore interesting to state that absolute 
absolutely all humans beings are born with the same quantity or margin of things they may have. The only variation is in their distribution. And thus, let us say that we all have 100 vital units, that which we can in time possess, and 100 negative units, which that which we lack. A, a rich man is one who has nullified the greater part of his possibilities in order to concentrate his 100 vital units on making money. <clears throat> Love, spiritual sensitivity, family happiness, or other things will certainly be among the things lacking or negative units. Expressed in a different way, a man may never have more than the symbolic uh, 100, but this quantity can be distributed among many things or concentrated on only two or three. And even distribution results in more balanced life. But a balanced life would probably not be outstanding in any any special way. Uh, concentration implies the the sacrifice of many things. <clears throat> These uh, so there's a few examples. So I'm gonna try to explain it as best as I can. Okay, so example one: distrib. This is gonna be the distribution of vital units, and they're all gonna add up to a hundred, of course. So riches, forty-five units. Power, twenty units. Moral nobility. Moral nobility is five units. Love is five units. Intelligence is ten units. Health is ten units. And happiness is five units. And with this example, the result is an individual who is rich and powerful, but very unhappy. Example two, distribution of vital units would be riches, ten units. Power, ten units. Love, fifteen units. Friendship. 10 units moral nobility 15 units intelligence 15 units health 10 units and happiness 15 units the result is a more balanced individual with a richer life filled with different elements these examples are absolutely arbitrary and their only point is to illustrate what occurs with the distribution of concentration of vital units. <clears throat> the reader who is aware of this theory can set up examples for different cases. For example, we could map out the distribution of our muscular capacity, which we could entirely use up just by walking, or we could walk chop wood, swim, climb, and box, distributing our vital energy into various areas. Similarly, we can use a fixed electricity potential uh, to supply one source of great power compensation or divide it among hundreds of ordinary bulbs. According to the law of the vital unit, it is very interesting to analyze what occurs when two people wed, thus sharing their vital units. Or in the case of a child's birth, this baby arrives with its own 100 vital units, which while under the parent's care, increases the family estate of vital units. In conclusion, we could say that only those who are able to rise above the principle of rhythm can consider themselves truly free. All right. In the principle of cause and effect, <clears throat> the principle of cause and effect states, every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to the law. Chance is only a name for a law not recognized. There are many plans of causation, but nothing escapes the law. But this law teaches us that nothing in the universe happens by chance. Everything has a specific cause. What we call chance is only something where its cause remains unknown. Its causes remain unknown. It is not possible that something should exist apart from and beyond the laws. 
as this force would be independent and superior to the universe. Applying the law of rhythm to the law of cause and effect, we should state that the magnitude of an effect is always equivalent to the importance of the cause which generated it. As we explained when discussing the principle of polarity, there are two basic planes, that of causes, superior, and that of effects, lower. And man is his, in his daily life is aware only of the latter. We live in the world of effects and only the hermeticist has knowledge of the occult causes of events. And the most well-known manifestation of chance is what Hindus call karma, a word which we will use because it is the most adequate. Karma endeavors to explain the relationship existing between two events currently happening to an individual and his actions in the past, either in this life or in a previous one. Contrary to what is believed, karma is not always negative. Um, there is a positive side to of karma, which is equivalent to our good deeds in the past. <clears throat> the law of karma is intimately bound to reincarnation, a truth we uh, leave aside for now. Uh, we'll, li we'll leave aside for now. Reincarnation is a very personal matter in which the individual feels within him that it exists, and if he does not feel it, th then no argument will convince him. Furthermore, it is, uh, if it were possible to produce proof, it would detract from the freedom of choice and it would pressure the individual if an individual was convinced of the truth of some occult phenomena. Uh, he might enter an esoteric school without genuine spiritual concern. Nevertheless, in previous pages, we suggest a method of intellectually conceiving what reincarnation is, a power which takes possession of matter. With the experiment uh, on indoor plants, we must realize that what we really do, what we really did was to incarnate a force into the vegetable matter which survives the life of the plant and continues evolution indefinitely. This is an analogy of what happens when spiritual energy incarnates in an animal body, for when the animal dies, the spirit continues incarnating into new bodies until completing an evolutionary cycle in matter. The law of cause and effect gives us a rational explanation of the of the apparent injustices in the world. We can understand why a child is born crippled or dies at an early age. It is possible to realize why some people with exquisite spiritual sensitivity live in poverty and other true beasts swim in riches. This law clarifies the phenomenon of child prodigies who show extraordinary musical potential from a very young age, or the extraordinary possession of, of sudden wealth due to a stroke of luck. We will shed further light on the reasons why an individual who works himself to death never attains uh, economic success and why, on the other hand, fortune, fortune smiles on another who is haphazardly lazy. <clears throat> New light is the shed on historical events. We can understand how certain relevant historical figures reach great power arising from nothing, as in the case of Hitler. Certainly, we do not know what cause placed him in the position of power he occupied, for life is like an enormous tapestry upon which history is woven stitch by stitch and on which all events are interwoven. This is the veil of Maya, which cannot be penetrated by common mortals. The action of karma is one of the reasons why we maintain that all is written, as the present is always determined by our past acts. 
Each person has a certain quantity of causes which are held in check for a period of time during his life, which forge the individual's destiny as the material as they materialize into into effects. Only the true wise man can partic- partially neutralize the effects of undesirable causes. We have already spoken of the lords of destiny or archons who govern the destiny of sapiens. In reality, they work with the karma of individuals, but a collective point of view, it is the karma of humanity that they control and manage. And with the general context, they act as occult judges who reward or penalize the actions of the human being. The principle of cause and effect are parallel to this. That is, the human being punishes himself with his own karma. The archon plan and stage the action so the individual receives beneficial lessons and undergo important experiences. There are people who in their past lives were extremely rich and took advantage of the power of their money and who in their present lives are practically beggars in order that they may themselves suffer the experiences of extreme poverty. He who had murdered a few fellow men will in turn die due to the direct or indirect influences of his past action. The one who took advantage of love or passions to enslave a woman will, in this life, be under the domination of the female sex, or it could be the opposite, you know. (laughs) Um, Occasionally, a a beggar will display terrible arrogance and, and seem to despise the entire world. And this attitude is not just simply simple psychological compensation, but has deeper roots. Certainly, his individual certainly this individual occupied a high position um, in his past life, and it was as a result his excessive pride survived the death of his physical body. It can be debated that if we had lived previously in other bodies, we would surely remember this. But this reasoning is infantile. Um, When the brain is destroyed, memory is erased. Nevertheless, instinctive impulses derived from past experiences survive. For example, if an individual had been condemned for theft in previous incarnation, he would in his present life be extremely honest, but compulsively so. Um, In the case of gambling, we can see a direct action of the Archon of Destiny who chose which individuals would win the greatest prizes and who will then have their lives entirely changed. In the case of those who are already millionaires who win a substantial prize, this will only increase the enforcement of the event previously decreed by the Lord of Destiny. Chance is only the visual effect of a cause unknown to us. Generally, it is not possible to establish all the causes which have provoked a certain effect as these are entwined one with absolutely selfish manner uh, to help deceitful lotus or ruffians could eventually cause the destruction of a man who is valuable and spiritually elevated. There is another aspect of great interest in which we are cover, covering, and this refers to the individual who commits a concealed theft, enjoying ill-gotten gains or property he has not earned. This man enters into a contract with nature. Someday he must return or pay for what he stole. Therefore, if we are imprudent enough to help this person, we will we will to a great extent be responsible for the development of his life and nature will demand that we pay the pending debt. All that we need or desire belong to the common pool of nature, which gives nothing but sells us what we require and it must always be paid for 
Nothing is gratis. We even have to pay for our own lives, for the moment of pleasure, for love, for serenity, for knowledge, for power, and even for the air we breathe. We do not notice this as we consider money as the only viable instrument of payment. Um, We are not aware that in cosmic commerce, money has no value and other things are required, such as the golden broth, which we mentioned in previous chapters. To the devil, for example, one's soul is more valuable than all gold in the world. The most important thing about the law of cause and effect is that the advanced hermeticist can raise himself to the highest world of causes by a progenous effort of will. By polarizing himself on this plane, he converts himself into a cause and thus stops living the effects which emanates from the higher plane, from the world of causes. The hermeticist can channel his life according to his own planning, as he has the certainty that the causes placed into movement by his spiritual power will sooner or later materialize into concrete material effects. All right. And the principle of gender. The principle of gender states gender is everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. The seventh principle, hermetic principle, completes the knowledge of the laws of nature, showing us that gender is manifested in everything and that the masculine and feminine forces are present in everything. We must not make the mistake of confusing gender with sex as sex refers only to the structure of the genital tell, uh, organs and the difference is, adapt, is adaptation between male and female. Sex is one of the many manifestations of principle of gender and corresponds to the physical plane. But as we are aware, there are many planes where the mind principle exists as does gender. Hermeticists maintain that gender has an impaling nature and that this nature acts even in the atom in which we find both the positive and the negative whose mutual influence and and, uh, influence creates energy instead of referring to positive and negative poles we can speak more appropriately of masculine and feminine the generator and the conceiver The positive element of electricity is masculine, and the negative element is feminine. The feminine or negative is the womb of all electrical and magnetic phenomena. The female energy seeks union with the masculine and absorbs from it that which is active, thus producing a new force. Hermetic teachings also affirm that gravity is produced by the attraction or repulsion of masculine and feminine principles. As stated in previous pages, analyzing our physical body, we will discover that it's it, that it possesses bi- bipolarity. Thus, man is masculine for the solar plexus down and feminine from this zone up to including the head, while the woman, the opposite is true. In this manner, we can observe that women is, is cerebrally masculine and man is cerebrally feminine. The principle of conception in man is in his imagination and in women is in her uterus. Within our bodies, the right side is masculine or positive and the left side negative. The right cerebral hemisphere is positive and the left negative. It is possible for, uh, possible by means of the principle of gender to understand the hidden significance of the mystic or religious act of joining the palms of the hands in prayer, which involves a process of uh, generation upon uh, opposing positive and negative. It is through the occult law that the student of hermeticism 
can create a new being, a mutant、uh, who will be conceived with the superior superior qualities of an an、uh, acutely、uh, human being. There is no other real path for spiritual evolution. All that does not involve using this secret is purely fantasy. And from it, only purely subjective results will be obtained. From the understanding, this law of gender, we can also realize how deceptive it is to evade problems, difficulties, and obstacles, considering them merely as hurdles,、uh, a waste of time, or irritating situations. The hermeticist must visualize problems as the negative pole of life. That is the force against which he must oppose his positive generative energy is in order to create what he desires. If we understand this phenomenon, we will reach a completely new and different vision of the hurdles in our life,、um, which will be nothing more than the. Complement needed to develop our consciousness, consciousness, the, the the precise quality we wish to attain, and this result of the collision between inertia and the power and our willpower,、um, directed by an awakened intelligence. If this struggle between opposing forces did not exist, hermetic process、uh, progress would not be possible. And neither would evolution. At this point, we will reveal the great magic secret of mutation of sapiens, a man of clay into a stellar man. This transformation is only possible if the subject enters into contact with a flesh and blood master, who will be his spiritual father, and who will be the and who will the mother be. The mother is the beast of the individual. That is the side of himself that is a feminine or negative polarity, spiritually speaking. It is thus that the initiate is a child of the beast and the spiritual master. <clears throat> the student who is facing a real process of initiation, not symbolically. Will find himself strongly dragged by the pendulum in the oscillation,、uh, which will suddenly bring him closer to the master or to the beast. There will be moments when he will sense the overwhelming evidence of hermeticism deep within himself, feeling himself raised to, to higher planes of awareness. At other times, all will be darkness. The initiation will lose all sense and purpose. And the student will believe himself submitted to a cruel joke. Only the gradual stopping of this p- pendular movement will enable him to reach the stability of conscious knowledge. The principle of gender shows us that it is not possible for creation to exist without the presence of the father and mother element, and this is a valid. This is valid throughout the entire universe, including the process of initiation. This is the reason why a solitary, solitary man, no matter how much theoretical knowledge he may possess, can only reach subjective results because he lacks the other generative pole. This is why it is necessary to find a master, and the significance of this fact was stated previously. If a master is not a mutant, he is then a false master. But this term is relative. Although he may be false in relation to which he is superior and optimum, he can also be a very true in relation to that which is inferior. Therefore, it is necessary to clarify that although a master is not a mutant, he can be a, a, of a great help for a student. What he will not be able to offer in this case will be knowledge of the absolute, nor could. He transmit the sacred flame, which, according to、um, according to fables, was stolen from heaven by Prometheus. The sacred flame is not an abstraction or a symbol; it is a fact and is the spiritual power 
symbolized in the acronym I-N-R-I, which appears over the head of Jesus Christ. In true hermetic meaning is in natura rev- renovator int- integral, integral. <laughs> but can also be read as Jesus uh, nascente revivator io or igni nitrous voris inventor. All these formulas were used by the early Rosicrucians, unknown today, and they referred precisely to the divine fire, the magic firmament of alchemists, which, as we have already stated, renews everything. Nevertheless, one must not assume that it is sufficient to find a master in order to evolve. On the contrary, the disciple will progress only to the extent that he himself handles the principle of gender in a superior manner, because even though a positive or active spiritual firmament is necessary, it is also nonetheless indispensable, and that the student himself created a mental and etheric being with the character and qualities of the initiate. This is known as a thurgy, a secret teaching we will study further on. Continuing with the principle of gender, it is necessary to consider the tremendous positive or negative influence that marriage can have in a person's life. The influence is in, in is injurious when the union is so in harmonious that it becomes dangerously destructive and favorable when there's true love and harmony. The hermetic concept of marriage is quite different from the common one. It is not necessary for there to be a marriage contract to give this union its name. We will explain this proceeding from the opposite angle. There may be a couple, and this unfortunately is frequent who have entered into a legal and lawful marriage, but who absolutely lack the aptitude for achieving what we could call a matrimonial aura, and therefore can be married for 20 years without forming this aura. The matrimonial aura is a hidden offspring, a mental child of both mates. It is, it is, a close positive magnetic field which joins, harmonizes, and protects the couple, making the marriage truly established or really formed according to the law of laws of nature. It is not the laws of man which wed two people, it is only nature which joins or separates them according to prevailing conditions. The matrimonial aura is the secret, true secret of conjugal happiness and union. When this does not exist, there is nothing, no matter how many certificates have been issued by competent authorities. Hermetically, only that which is joined by the occult bond or the bipolar orb is is a marriage, which is formed solely by true and genuine love. Couples who lack this occult child of love are not married. They are joined solely by passion, personal convenience, loneliness or habit. Religious uh, religions who consider marriage something indestructible and irreversible, binding the parties for life until the penalty of serious sin urgently need to modify this commandment <clears throat> for this approach means proceeding inversely as a sapien beast generally does. The approach means trying to maintain the artificial union of the family by an unnatural imposition instead of a clear and beautiful manifestation of love. <clears throat> it is not preferable to teach people to truly love and truth if a family is not joined by a genuine love, it is only a group of beasts who live together under obligation or for convenience. A search, a situation that relates to more people than we would, than we would like. 
it is super uh, fluish, <laughs> super fluish to say that happiness is only possible in homes where there is a real marriage. For, for otherwise, there is only a poor imitation of an ideal situation as there is only one tie which will keep man and wife united in one true way, love. The lack of it is only is the only thing that c- conspires against the stability of the family. We wish to conclude this brief study of gender, suggesting that the reader try to discover for himself all that lies between the lines and meditate deeply on this subject as the most profound secrets are revealed with this key. For our part, we are not interested in revealing too much, only enough to provide the tools for the growth and the development of the initiate. All right, and that concludes chapter 10. And next time we'll pick up on chapter 9, the disciples. Uh, And I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you'd like to be a guest reader on David Berry's channel, give him a, a email or contact him in Discord. And until next time, I'll see Have a good one.